So we're going to look at uh, two examples here of calculating the cross product of two vectors, the third type of multiplication. Remember we have scalar multiplication, which adjusts, like it says, the scale or the maybe the length of the vector. We have the dot product, which by itself doesn't seem to have a lot of meaning, but it's already been a tool used in uh, more than one different type of calculation. So this cross product, we've seen it. Uh, let me just take a moment here to remind you there's this little button called the pause button. Listening to me do it over and over again might help you fall asleep at night, but it doesn't help you be able to um, work these pretty simple calculations out. The physics person will think you can just do this. The linear algebra person will think you can just do this. The method I'm using, um, fancy term, is called expansion by minors. And you set it up into a 3x3 three three matrix, which we have here. And we calculate what is called its determinant. Um, but the textbook has uh, more of a formula way of looking at it. And there are other methods. And my students know you're allowed to use any of those methods. But you have to show at least which method you're using early on here. Later on, if you can do the calculation in your head later in the semester um, without making any minus sign errors, go for it. So for now, here we go. This calculation is going to be a small matrix here. Um, uh, we're going to calculate its determinant, the 3, 5, negative 1, and 2 times i minus a little idiosyncrasy of the expansion by minor process. The matrix that you get if you cross off the column and the row with a J in it. So on the left side you'll have the 2 and the column with 4 and then on the right side the 5 and the 2 because J doesn't exist in those two columns. J plus and then finally if you cross off the row and the column with the K in them you'll have the matrix 2 and 3, 4, negative 1 and each of these is a smaller 2 by 2 determinant so we have now expanded, made more, into smaller matrices. Expansion by minors. All right, let's do the calculation. Three times two is six, six minus a negative five is going to be 11 so it's that product minus this product that's going to be 11 i minus uh, 2 times 2 is 4 minus 4 times 5 is 20 4 minus 20 is negative 16 minus a negative 16 would be plus 16 j um, plus we have a negative 2 minus 12 is a negative 14 okay and if you're feeling like your IJKs are a little underdressed you can use the hat symbols that are often used here and as always for my students you may use the component form which is 11 16 negative 14 so now I just want to remind you, this is a calculation we just did, but it doesn't provide any purpose or meaning. This strange little vector we just generated, 11, 16, negative 14, uh, 11, 16, negative 14 is orthogonal or perpendicular if they're touching to both of these vectors here. And this cross product is also part of a number of other geometric interpretations, some of which we'll get into in class and some of which I'll let leave for you and your fun setting on your own to discover. So if they truly are um, orthogonal to this cross product, let's just try this vector 235 
And let's do a little verification. Verify. Two, three, five. Eleven, sixteen, negative fourteen. And I'm going to put the dot product in here. Now, why would I have done that? Well, the dot product is part of the angle between two vectors formula. And for these vectors to be orthogonal, that means the angle has to be 90 degrees and the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. And we've done this before, but I'm just reminding you that these pieces fall into a particular order and need, and we need to know that little tool. Uh, two times 11 would be 22. Three times 16 would be 48. And five times a negative 14 is negative 70. That, my students, happens to add up to, drum roll please, zero. And the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So when the dot product gives us this zero, then we know that we have a 90 degree angle between the two vectors. So these formulas you have to not just keep somewhere near your person when you're doing homework and problems, but I think these are worth internalizing because they are rather significant in physics especially. So, well, let's look at another example really fast. This is simple looking one. It doesn't want to go away. Oh, well. I cross product J equals question mark. So what vector is there that is perpendicular orthogonal if they're not touching to the i and j vectors? Maybe that's not an automatic answer. Um, but what if we look at it this way? What if we remember that the i vector is in the x-axis direction and the j vector is in the y-axis axis direction, which direction would be perpendicular to both of those at the origin? I think we'll find that should be the z direction, which would be k if we're looking at components like that. So let's do a quick little check. i, j, k. i by itself is the vector 1, 0, 0. j by itself is the vector 0, 1, 0. And this is how we set up the cross product using the method I've been working with here, expansion by minors. And if we set this up, let's scroll a little bit here, and cross off the I column and the I row, we're going to get 0, 0, 1, 0 times I minus, cross off the J row and the J column, 1, 0, 0, 0, J, plus, if you cross off the K row and the K column, you get 1, 0, 0, 1, K, and that's 0 minus 0, which is 0 I. 0 minus 0 again, which is 0 J, plus 1 minus 0, which would be 1 K. And we would find out that we actually just get the vector K, which could be written as the vector 0, 0, 1, exactly. Exactly. Q, E, D. Quite easily done, which is not what it means in Latin. But again, you can look that up. All right, 
Well done.